file. Well, welcome everybody uh, to the March edition of Scale Up Mastermind. Uh, today um, it's going to be a great one. Um, we've got an excellent guest. I, I one somebody who truly inspires me on the line uh, today. <laughs> Don't be coy, Jennifer Ness. Um, <laughs> But uh, this is brought to you as uh, by the Thurston EDC, Center for Business and Innovation. Um, we are bringing experts to you each, each month to talk about things that affect you in your business, how you can improve ways that you can, uh, things that you can take back to your business and um, use them as tangible tools to improve your productivity or improve your profitability um, or other facets of your business. Um, there's a number of different resources at Business Resources. Dot thurstonedc.com. Um, I'm not going to take too much time up there. I, I want to just jump right into it um, and introduce you to a uh, seasoned entrepreneur and expert, uh, Jennifer, uh, Jennifer, sorry, Jennifer Ness Tucker. My wife's name is Jennifer. So there's, <laughs> um, that's Jennifer what it Ness is. Tucker. We were talking about her a minute ago. <laughs> And she's going to be talking about how you can leverage systems and processes and automation in your business to create time. It's often said that everybody gets the same 24 hours in a day. Uh, she's going to show you how to use them better. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to her. Well, thank you so much, James. And thank you all for being here on time. Hopefully, you know, we will get through this and you all will leave here and be like, man, I feel like that was a great use of my time. So just a little bit about me um, before I get started. So I am, number one, I'm an educator. I absolutely love to teach. Like that's one of the best things that I do. I currently teach at Seattle um, Central College. I teach entrepreneurship and economics, um, but I also teach in settings like this, especially now with this virtual environment. But I'm an educator and I love to teach. So that's number one. Number two, I'm an entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur since 2009. I primarily um, do a lot of public speaking, teaching, coaching, mentoring, consulting, but I've written a few books as well. Um, and so, uh, and then number three, I'm an employee. So I just recently got a job at, um, Seattle Credit Union as the Vice President of Community Relations and Public Affairs. And then number four, I'm an example. Thank you, Bash. I'm an example. And the reason why I say I'm an example is because I started from nothing. I am first generation college student. I'm first generation entrepreneur. I'm first generation ever moving out of our little hometown. So it's just like, because of all of my experiences, I have a lot of, you know, growing pains and that I can share a lot of the things that I've gone through. So I'm super excited to be able to come before you all today and let you know that I too was running raggedy and rampant. You know how you got all this stuff going on and most of you might just be an entrepreneur. And when I say just, meaning you're not juggling a whole bunch of things like being an employee and an entrepreneur and an educator and, you know, all of those things. But for me, I was juggling all those things and still, it, still am right now. And so I had to absolutely employ systems or else I would have gone crazy. In addition to being all of that, I'm a mother. I have a 16-year-old daughter and a, a new fiance. And so it's like, even outside of all those things that I have going on, I still got additional responsibilities. So it's like, okay, how do I do all this and not feel like I'm going to lose my mind? So... I am going to get into some of the systems that I use, but before I do that, I just want to understand who I'm talking to. So if you could tell me in the chat who you are, do you represent an entrepreneur, entrepreneur and an employee, entrepreneur, employee, a homemaker, uh, you know, just tell me what those titles are, how many you have in a matter of a list so that I can see, okay, this is what I'm dealing with before we get into our systems. And welcome, Jono. And- Hi, good to see Hi. you. Good to see you too. Congratulations, huh? Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Yeah, thank we're doing you. pretty good. Absolutely. We're working on everything. Yes, thank you. 
And who else was that? Loretta. Welcome, Loretta. Hi, everyone. I'm just typing right now. I'm a grant writer, and I'm on here because I'm the new environmental director for the DR Foundation. And I am here to automate, hopefully, our social media and just learn more how I can scale up in my grant writing business. And thank you for having me, and thank you for putting this on. Thank you. So we have so, uh, we have some folks that's like me that has a lot of hats, right? Um, we have folks that are entrepreneur and an activist, entrepreneur and an employee, entrepreneur and a grandpa. Like that's the best thing in the world. I just got a new grandbaby, by the way. She was born October 21st. I just got back from a home in Ohio and that little baby is active. I'm telling you, she's like four months and all she wanted to do is just jump. So it's like... <laughs> By the time you get finished playing with her, your arms are like, okay, baby, okay. <laughs> so I didn't even mention I'm a grandma. But we got an independent hairdresser at a salon suite in Capitol Hill and also a contracted fractional CFO for a startup tech company, Remote Base, also Mary, also a parent of a wonderful cat and an alumni of Seattle Central. Okay, I love it. All right, and then we have... Um, a CEO at a senior living marketplace and also an entrepreneur. Love it. Oh, who's from Ohio? Lancer. Okay. That's my homeboy right there. Okay, Lancer. OH. <laughs> and then let's see um, entrepreneur, sustainable advisor, freelance grant writer, business strategist. Um, all right. And a corgi mom. Listen, we got a lot of select Seattle Central College alumni. I like that. Welcome, Carmen. We're just talking about all the different hats that we have to wear before we even get into the systems that actually work and help us to create balance in our life. I don't know about you. I remember back in the day when people would talk about work-life balance, and I'm like, what is that? <laughs> what, what? Please help me understand that. But once I got to understand it, I'm like, okay, I get it. I love it. So one of the things that I recently employed, and I'll tell y'all why. When I first started working um, at home through COVID, now I work 100% at home now. But when we first went to being at home because of COVID-19, I was happy because I felt like we're all in the house. We're all together and we're all you know, doing our thing. And so one day I was talking to my baby and I said something about um, something about being at home, something about being at home and and working from home or whatever. She was like, yeah, you here, but you ain't present. I was like, excuse me, I'm always here. She was like, yeah, you're here, but you're study in front of that computer. Like you always doing something. You're not really present. And I'm like. Me? So anyways, that was like an eye opener for me because little do we know, these folks are watching us. They're watching us. They're taking note to the things that we're doing. They're taking note to the things that we're not doing. They're taking note to if we're actually present and not just like, uh-huh, 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 you know? So that caused me to really sit back and be like, hmm, what can I do different? What should I be doing different? And one of the things I decided is when I'm off work, I'm off work. And so at five o'clock and sometimes even four o'clock, I will shut it down because honestly, I, I want to be here. I want to be here for her years, for her life. I don't ever want her to feel like, well, my mom worked on a time and she never had time for me. You know, yeah, she was, you know, out becoming successful or whatever, but her home life is jacked up. <laughs> so as a result, I had to really think, sit back and think like, okay, how do I do things differently? So my child understands that she is valuable and very important to me. And, and so is my time with her when I'm in the house. So I had to shut it down at four or five o'clock. What time do you all shut it down as entrepreneurs? And you gotta be honest. 9 p.m. Loretta. Woo. Okay. Five o'clock on days that I work from home, seven o'clock. Okay. 
I never did as a single parent and a full-time business owner. Okay. Joe said, when the work gets done, Joe, what do you mean? <laughs> oh, I have the fortune of not working at home. I have an office. So, and I have fortune of being in a relationship where I can be here as much as I need to be here. I set my goals and deadlines for the day. I meet those goals and deadlines and then don't take it home. So when you say when the work is done, what time are you normally leaving there? Depends on the day. This evening, I won't be gone out of here until probably eight o'clock. Is that normal? I'm not normal. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So there, not- there's some days I've been here later than that. And other days I'll be out of here at 3.30 in the afternoon. Okay. So I usually get here between five and six in the morning. So I see a lot of nines, a lot of tens. The work is never done through Joe, though, Joe. Exactly, Lancer. You can say that all day long. But if that's your if that's your barometer, we'll always find something to do or a reason to stay or one more thing to get done um, and never be able to leave. And somebody wrote nine to 10. So after you get off of work, where, where's the me time? Where's the quality time with yourself or your family if you're working until late into the evening? How is that, how is that benefiting your life or your family or your livelihood? And that question is for anybody that wants to go off mute. Uh, I'm gonna... go ahead. Sorry, James, go ahead. No, I, I was just going to say, you know, I, I mentioned in the chat that I'm an entrepreneur and uh, my, my wife and I, we have uh, a small business uh, that we run and it's often after work, right? We try to do this, fit this in after work on the weekends. Um, and, you know, the thing that keeps popping up is that there, our son, he's our only son. Um, he's just, he's eight years old and uh, it's only going to happen. It's exactly what you're saying, Jennifer Finesse. Um, they see you. They see where you're at. They see how much attention that they're paying. They're buying. He's always buying, you know, for my attention. Um, and he's going to be the one that's going to outlive the business, going to outlive this job, this career. Um, you know, we're going to have that relationship long after whatever's happening right now has happened. So, uh, so that's one thing that's been a, that's weighed on us a little bit um, in terms of where we put our efforts towards. So I just figured since you asked, I'd throw it out there. Thank you. Anybody else? Jennifer, well, you talked about being here late in the day. Maybe that's not good and everything. And I, I think I agree with you. The work never ends if you don't let it end. So if we set the parameters for our day and for our week, then we know when the work ends and we can schedule our stuff. Does that mean we ignore things? You also mentioned work-life balance. I personally don't believe there's such a thing. I believe that we are out of balance and it's up to us to choose what direction we're out of balance and for how long we're out of balance that direction. So we never get in balance? I don't think there is such a thing. If we're in balance, this is my personal opinion, and this is what I teach. If we're in balance, we're trying to juggle and make things even and equal and it can't be in our life there are seasons of our life there are seasons of our day that we have to choose with you it could be there's a time you went to ohio you spent with your granddaughter and that was family time you weren't working on your business you were out of balance that direction for that duration of time the the difference is do we choose it or do we let the world choose for us what direction we're out of balance and for how long I get what you're saying. I disagree because I still feel like there are absolutely times where I have to um, take off and do personal things, but that doesn't take away. There's no opportunity cost from the other things because I make sure that everything gets done. So that's what, when I think of balance, I think our, our perception of balance might be different. When I think of balance, I mean like, okay, if I'm going to work an eight hour day, which I seldom do that, to me, an eight hour day is so 1990s or 1900s. Some of the kids be like, was that in 1900s? <laughs> that was in the 1900s. 40 hours on Zoom or, or even half of that is just too much. Okay. So 
a 40 hour day. But anyways, what my point is, I am going to spend a significant amount of time on personal things like my family, right? I'm also going to spend a significant amount of time on my business and a significant amount of time at my job. That to me is balance. If I'm not doing those things or not doing them at all, any of those things at all, that to me is unbalanced. So I, so I understand your definition and my definition is different when it comes to work-life balance. Work-life balance means that everything that I want to do or everything that's valuable to me is actually getting done. That's balance to me. Not saying that because I'm doing this, I can't be doing this. And so I'm not unbalanced. So that's my opinion. Um, and that's my definition. So I get yours, Joe. I'm just, um, I don't agree with it. So I think we're that's, close that's to the okay. same place. I think we're close to the same place because you're making choices as to what areas that you're going to spend time in. And that's where the power is, is the choices that we make. And we're not allowing, you're not allowing the world to dictate what is should be important to you. You're yeah. saying what is going to be and where you make those time investments. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you. I want to say, um, go ahead, Margie. Oh. Yeah. Before, um, about a year ago, I used to work all the time. When I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, I started a business in 2018, and um, I'm constantly working. My team is remote, so I have um, people on the East Coast, so I'm up early and have early meetings. And then I have things that I'm doing, like for example, right now, right? So this is not, this is, I don't know, self or work, but this is not with family. And I was working all the time until I met a woman who she raised a ton of money for her company. And I'm like, how do you, how do you do that? Right? I'm exhausted. And she said, well, I take my, take one day off turn it off. Don't answer the phone. Don't look at the computer. Don't think about work. And I started doing that. And it actually brought me back to that create, creative place. Because when I'm not focusing on my work, I find, and I know this to be true. I knew it but before I started this. I knew it was true that I could, if I leave and go for a walk and do something, then the problem is easier to solve than sitting trying to work through things. Um, and so part of the reason I'm here is because I'm sure there's some other tools that I'm not using and I can make those that time even longer. I would love to not even think about work on a weekend, the whole weekend. I, I took a vacation this year and it was the best thing I ever did. And my business runs when I'm not there. It still yeah. works. So yeah, um, <laughs> that's a good thing. Thank you for sharing that. I, I, I heard somebody else and I, I don't know who it was, but does somebody else have a comment before we move on into some of the tools? And welcome, Bridget, Bridget. I did. Go ahead. It's John. It's Jonna. Thank you, Jennifer. Go ahead, Jonna. Hi. So what I wanted to say to James and everybody, I have I have older children. I'll be 64 on Monday. And oh, happy birthday. Thank you. you. We are all <laughs> setting a precedent. They are watching us. Mm -hmm. And when you get older and you're my age, you want kids that want to come around and make sure so parties are celebrated and everybody gets together. And that may sound crazy, but it's what they see is all that you work, 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 work. It, it, you really are building that same character. So as a warning, set some make it this generation, we are going to have balance and we are going to keep our priorities straight. And I just wanted to encourage you to do that. Yeah, thank you for that. Because what we're teaching them right now is that our time, we don't have enough time for them. So guess what happens when they get older and they move away? They don't have enough time for us. Because they're like, That's wait, right. this, is, this is the precedence that you set. This That's is right. how you showed me how to live life. And so yep. it's like, what? You want me to come over for your birthday? Man, I don't got time. I'm working. You're like, what is my birthday? <laughs> You know, and, and right. seriously, I just kept thinking this whole time, you know, he thinks I'm ignoring him. That's right. what he thinks, right? Because I'm, I'm trying to go out and get a glass of water, some coffee or whatever, go back to the, the thing. And he's trying to pull my attention away, show me something cool he built in the Minecraft. And, uh, and I'm like, no, nah, buddy, I got to gotta jump back. You know, he thinks I, I'm not wanting to spend time with him. So uh, yeah, that's a tough one when you work at home. Mm -hmm. you know, just I make sure. Yeah, like the when you get a break. I mean, hopefully you are taking breaks. Come on, James. <laughs> <laughs> at least a break, a 10 minute break, say hi and you know, give him a red belly. And then at lunch, make sure you throw a ball or just silly stuff, especially at home. It gets harder. 
but you guys are you'll get it you're all good parents and yeah. good people so we God all gonna you. get it and this, and this is helping us to do that so some of the systems that i employ one of the systems that i employ is when i get inquiries i get inquiries from all over the place since i've been here in washington i have not really advertise my business at all. A lot of my clients come from Ohio. They know me, they've been past clients. And so they send people my way. And so I may get a, um, an instant message on Facebook, or I might even get a text message. I might get something where somebody's like, Hey, do you still do this? Or, or can we sit down and talk? And the very first thing I do is send them a link. And I'm going to show y'all the link that I send them. I'm going to put it in the chat right now. That's the, that's a system that I have in place. Because I'm yeah. like, if you, if you want to, um, I heard echo, sorry. If you want to get with me, if you want me to help you with your business in any way. And another reason why I wasn't doing a lot of this here either is because I was working for the small business development center and it was really a conflict of interest. But now that I'm no longer working there, I can pretty much work on help folks with their business outside of that. But the first thing I do, and I do three things. I'm a certified life coach. I'm a certified business advisor and I'm a certified financial coach. So I have a link for each of those three things and where they go to, I want to show you all. So this first link I just put in the chat right now, I'm going to share my screen because this is just one of one of my many systems, <laughs> but it, it really helps me to stay on track because I cannot, I do not have the time to sit down with everybody who says, Hey, I'm interested and you helping me with my business. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't have time for that. I have to qualify these leads by sending them this link. So the link goes straight here to this um, Google form. And this Google form, they just fill it out. And then the la very last line on here is, what does it say? How can we help you finesse your business? What's your greatest business success? Do you know the demographic? So it gets deeper into where exactly are you at? So if I decide that we can have a conversation or that I want to have a conversation with you, I need to know these things first. That way, we're, neither of us is wasting time. And it also tells me if you don't fill this out in advance, then you really don't want to talk to me. <laughs> so I'm not going to put any time on my calendar for anybody who cannot follow the process. So once I get this back, I review it and I say, oh, okay. Then this person is serious about what it is they need or want from me. And it might benefit me to actually have a conversation with them. So does anybody find that helpful? Thank you, Lancer. He said, I love Google Forms. <laughs> if they don't fill it out, they flaky flakes, like Lancer said, <laughs> just not serious. But that's my process. And um, the reason why I came up with that process is because I, I'm, I've wasted time. I don't have time to waste. And I've also done things where I'll sit down with somebody and we, uh. spend, we spend so much time up front trying to figure out what it is what, what, do, what do you want? So we just spent 10, 15, 20 minutes figuring out those things that I could just get from my form. Also, it's absolutely helpful so that I can follow up because here's the thing. The fortune is in your follow-up. I was just talking to a client the other day and she was like, oh, um, she was talking about cash flow issues and things like that. And I said, well, you have a few people that have inquired. Have you sent them an invoice? She was like, no. My invoice process takes so long that I try to do all of that on a Saturday. I said, girl, you just talked about you got cash flow problems. If you send out these invoices, more than likely two or three of them are going to pay. That's instant cash flow. What are you talking about right now? Like, what are, what are we talking about? <laughs> the fortune is in the follow up. And so, one of the things that one of the other systems that I use, once I get that Google form and I look at it, I have a standard template email that goes out to them. And in my email, it says, hey, it looks like you're interested in this. Please clarify that that's what you're interested in and please book a time on my Calendly link. Who uses Calendly? 
Yeah. I think most of us are, I mean, especially now, right? But I definitely use that Google form. Oh, never heard of it. Okay, let me tell you about this. Ooh, thank you, Trish. Thank you, Kirsten. I'm about to teach y'all some good stuff. All right, let me pull it up. <laughs> let me pull it up real quick. Um, so, oh, let me go. Oh, let me share my screen. Let me share my screen. Calendly is the best thing smoking. I, I promise. After we teach you this today, you, it's going to change your life. I'm trying to find the right screen. Okay. Share. So here's the Calendly. Let me go to my link really quickly. I have to find my um, email. Bam. Okay. Compose. I just have to go to it this way. So right here at the bottom of my email, can y'all see that? Okay, good. It says schedule a meeting time here. So you click on that. Oh, I gotta click on that control. So this brings up my Calendly link. And by the way, this is free. You can do, I think, at least two different types of Calendly's for free. So this goes straight here and it says, this person wants 60 minutes on my calendar. I don't even know how in the world I got 60 minutes on here because that is really impossible. I don't even do 60 minute meetings. <laughs> so this might be uh, really out of date. Oh, okay. I'll do 60 minutes because it's only on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Y'all see that? So those are the days that you can actually get with me. So if you, let's just say you were interested in scheduling a meeting on the 13th. I have a five o'clock slot, a six o'clock slot and a seven o'clock slot. This way we are not going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth with one another to figure out the best time. I can literally say, oh, okay, Jennifer Ness is available on the 13th at six o'clock. And I am too, bam, I register. And when they register, it gives them my Zoom link and it gives them a calendar entry. And then they're on my calendar and I'm on their calendar, bam. So that's just saving a whole lot of time. Does that make sense, uh, Trish and Kirsten? Is that a life changer? Thank you. It Thank changed you. the way I do things. <laughs> what did you I, say? I said, I said it changed the way I do things all together. Oh my goodness. Who has time to send back and forth? Are you available on Tuesday the 16th at three o'clock? No, I might be available on Tuesday the 23rd at five. No, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> nope. So that's that. So those are two systems that I use. Any systems that, because we have some experienced folks on here and we have some, some new folks on here. Any systems that you all use before I get into some of my others? Thank you for turning on your camera. I like to see that beautiful face. <laughs> You're muted. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was, because you know, I'm still, uh, at, I'm still at work. I was just rounding off when we, we started, that's why. I Thank you for being here. Yeah, I'm here. And it's always nice to see you again. Because I've Absolutely. missed you. Absolutely. You a lot, lot, lot. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have any systems that you all are using? Or any, any challenges? Let's talk about that, first of all. Let's talk about challenges. Challenges that you're having in your business where you could say, man, if I had a system for that, it would change my life. Any challenges? Okay, for me, I'll, I'll go. My, my challenge that I'm looking for a system is actually um, engagement in groups in, in, in uh, social media. I wish okay. I had and, you know, 10 heads. Okay. I don't know if any um, tool or any quick way to get people to engage in your group without me having to spend so much time on social media you know, at a given point of time. Do you schedule things in your groups, um, Bridget? Yeah, I schedule there. I have it, I, ha I do training in my group once a week, every Thursday at um, 5 p.m. So No, I, I mean, do you schedule posts to go out? Like a post on Thursday morning, a post on Friday afternoon, a post on Saturday. Do you schedule any of the posts to go out in your group? Yes, I do, but I don't have a, a tool that, I, I used to have the, um, 
what they call that hot something I've forgotten, but I canceled the subscription. Well, you can do Hootsuite. Are you familiar with Hootsuite, Hootsuite or yeah. Sprout? Yeah. Hootsuite and Sprout, and this is for everyone else, um, is a great way to schedule your social media on all of the different social media platforms. That way you're not spending a ton of time every day on social media. People feel like, well, not anymore, but it used to be people thought, man, you're on social media all the time. I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably on social media like once a week now. I used to be on there a lot more. But my point is I schedule things out and I spend time like on a weekend night or, or, or a weeknight and schedule things out to go on social media. That way it's, it looks like I'm active. It looks like I'm engaged, but I'm really not. But one uh, of the things that I'm very intentional about is commenting. Because that engagement is very important. It helps with your analytics in social media, but it also shows the people who are watching that you are aware of what's going on and that you are engaged in the conversations. Okay. So hopefully that'll help for you, Bridget. Other yeah. than that, if you're talking about like, um, like some type of automation to, to take the place of engagement, that's, that's nothing out there like that. Because guess what? Social media is meant to be social. It's meant for us. We can only show up in certain ways if we are social, if we are active on there. And if we're not, we're going to be so far low on the pole, totem pole, you know, nobody will see our stuff. So it's important to stay active and, and especially in your business account. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Loretta said that MailChimp can automate your post as well. So don't know if you're going to talk about it. Oh, she's talking about me. Um, don't know if I'm going to talk about it, but MailChimp, yes, is definitely a great way to automate. And I noticed that they're doing a lot more. Like a lot of these companies, like even Zoom now, did y'all know that Zoom has Zoom events? Sort of like hop in. Yeah, they, they have a new platform called Zoom events. Um, so it's, it's in beta right now. But my point is they are absolutely enhancing their offerings because they know that we've been virtual for so long they want to make sure that these virtual tools are working for us any other challenges in business that we want to talk about well you know, one, okay. one, go ahead i was just going to say one system that um you know we we had trouble with scale up right was uh, following up on the registrations um, people would register, uh, they, there wasn't an automated response for those registrations. Um, anybody who'd taken it and this, I believe most of you guys actually saw it after we, we resolved that problem, but, um, we, we were able to create using, uh, Zapier, um, a, a, a work between, between our registration app and the email server to be able to send out those email confirmations and, and create those reminder, uh, list for registrations. So um, there are a couple of programs and Zapier is one I, I have experience with that, that automate certain parts of the, the follow-up. And so that was a problem. It's no longer a problem. Uh, and it's getting even less of a problem as we've, uh, we've explored it. Thank you for that, James. Go ahead. I, I, heard, I saw you were about well, to say something. Uh, well, my, um, I have all of these different things. So I have Zoom. I have, I work off of Zoho. So I have Zoho meeting, Zoho webinar. I have, you know, people just coming back. Calendarly sounds really great. And I tried it for a little bit, but then Zoom has their own kind of thing that it's just like, it gets to a little bit overwhelming because I'm like making sure that if I schedule an appointment here, that it's in all of my calendars. So oh, it syncs. Yes, yes. Maybe it wasn't when you were using it, but it absolutely syncs to all of your calendars and your Zoom. Yeah. So that's, and maybe not. I mean, I think you're right. I think they now have some kind of an adaption, but that has always been a bit of a, an, an issue for me. And then the um, one thing that I know that I spend time on my social, but then I don't spend as much time on my email marketing. And I know that I get a lot of response on my email. So I keep thinking, boy, if I could have a tool, and again, I have lots of tools. I have Zoho, um, CRM Plus. So it does quite a bit for me. Um, but how can I, I literally, I do, I schedule, I sit on, um, this is the, the week that I'm doing it. 
preparing for next month, all the social media posts that I'm going to put out. Um, and then I know I should probably sit and do all of the emails all that later in the day, right? Like spend one Is morning. There, and are you using any type of drip campaign? Because I know yes. right now I'm using constant contact. And yes, I, I use a drip campaign where mm -hmm. it looks like I'm reaching out to them, but yeah. I'm not like I've already yes. scheduled this stuff to go out. So are you using those? I am. Um, if they are like a new somebody that's coming in, you know, it's in a process that I a normal process. But when I do posts, that's not a normal process. It's, it's something that I'm just talking about and I'm not stopping and putting it in an email. And that's my and I've been trying to figure out, well, maybe I can just create a process so that I do that as well. I mean, it's just like a touch, right? It's not yeah. a, a huge um formal email or an introduction but yes i just learned how to do um drip campaigns last year and it is to die for <laughs> a time saver yes. somebody in the chat i uh, mentioned money management apps for invoicing not going to buy quickbooks yet listen i have one that i stand by um and it is wave apps so it's w i put it in the chat actually waveapps.com so with wave apps, and I know the the uh, the uh, accountant and CPA and bookkeeper on here is probably like ah, but <laughs> wave apps is something that I turn all of my clients onto. It's a simplistic way to manage your your finances. You can run your reports on there, your balance sheet, your cash flow statement, your profit and loss statement, and it and it sets up your chart of accounts for you, and it's absolutely free. When you get into the invoicing or the payroll, then you can pay like a monthly fee. But for just for the money management portion of it, it's free. I'm all about the free and the cheap tools. So that is one that's free. Okay, so that's waveapps.com. Um, <clears throat> do you consider batching a system? Tell me more about that. What do you mean by um, batching a system? Well, you were talking about your social media campaigns. You can set many of those up. I run a podcast, so I'll batch several of those, doing a lot of the nuggets at one time. So you spend, you block that time out to do a whole bunch of stuff that, as you use the term, drip out later. So would you consider that batching process a system? Absolutely. And thank you for sharing that. Using that, using um, one day or one block of time where you are batching out, as um, Joe said, you are putting out all of your content. Like I record my webinars usually, I'm not webinars, my podcast on a Sunday. And I usually set them up like I'm, I'm interviewing different people. So I set it up on a Sunday and I'll batch them that evening. And I don't release all of them at the same time, but I put them in the queue and I save the date. And that way I'm not going back and having to redo work and re-listen to it. I try to do everything right then and have it out of the way so that I can move on to the next thing. So yes, thank you for sharing that. Um, Loretta said MailChimp will create a store, cons consultancy business, um, appointments synced to Calendly, email, MailChain, and you can track followers as well as create a business website and YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook posts. On Okay, MailChimp then really stepped their game up. That's some new stuff. <laughs> yes, thank you for sharing that. I didn't even realize MailChimp did all that. I know it didn't used to, so... That's awesome. Yeah, that's what I said, James. Wow. MailChimp just stepped the game up. Um, oh, yes, we are recording. So I don't know, James can let you all know how you can get the recording, but um, we are recording this. So if, if you uh, have to leave early or whatever, it is definitely being recorded. So thank you, Bash. Good to see you. All right. What other systems or what other challenges are you all facing that you need assistance with? So we can talk it out. We got about 10 more minutes. So I want to make sure that I'm hitting the marks and the things that you all have um, challenges with. I'm interested in um, virtual assistants. Do you know anything about them or how to use them or that kind of thing? Yes. So, um, there's a website called Elance. Elance. There's a website called Handshake. And what I have found to be super useful is there are folks out here that will be your um, COO for hire or your CFO for hire or your administrative assistant for hire 
Um, they are running their own business, so you can really classify them as a contractor, not an employee. And that's that's another that's a whole another topic. I won't even go there. But um, <laughs> because they have their own business, they can be a consultant for you and be classified as such, and you are legally legally within the parameters to do so. Um, you can find them a lot of different places. For me, I can I would highly advise you to search out your network first. Because there is somebody in your network that says, oh, I use so-and-so and she's amazing or he's amazing. And you should probably use him too or her too. And here's the contact information. Um, there are different Facebook groups um, that I go to with a lot of like women entrepreneurs or, or black entrepreneurs or you know whatever those affinity groups are. And you'll see that there are definitely um, support there. A lot of times I see women advertising in those groups like, hey, if you need support with this or that, I'm here and this is my business. So I would highly recommend that. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, thank you, Kirsten. I'm glad that helps. I think you will truly enjoy. It. And there's a lot of videos on um, YouTube. Like there's a seven minute tutorial that gives you everything you need to know. But there are a lot of videos out there if you need support and they provide support. And again, it's a free service. Um, I had trouble with QuickBooks myself and I was doing bookkeeping for a little while. I just felt like I was always, you know what they say, junk in, junk out. And I just I've always felt like I was doing something wrong. By the time I'm running reports, I'm like, oh my goodness, this is just crazy. But with Wave Apps, it's just so simple. Yeah, no learning curve. Yes, thank you for that, James. He said, don't underestimate networking when thinking about sourcing contractors. So important. And I know we've gotten away from networking. We got to do more of that. Um, and especially, you know, getting back to the in-person events or maybe even still virtual, but we got to do a better job of seeing what the folks around us do and how we can support one another and also patronize each other's services, right? So thank you for that. <clears throat> Any other challenges? It's about, we have about 15 more minutes. Um, and I do want to leave some time for networking. So I want to leave some time at the end. So we have about five more minutes. Ooh, Loretta. So get, create a LinkedIn services page so people can search for your work contract. Wait a minute, this is something new to me. So LinkedIn now has services page, like, like a fan page on Facebook? It's not like a fan page, it's your work page. So you have your regular profile where you network with people like posts, but if you don't create a separate services page, that says, I offer grant writing, business consulting, whatever business you're offering, people can't find you. I found that there's people in my grant writing collective that are way more um, experienced than I am and they weren't getting clients. And I was like, do you have a LinkedIn job page? And they're like, no. And I was like, well, that's your number one problem. People can't search grant writing and find you if you don't have a job page on LinkedIn. Okay, so you're saying a business page. Yeah, it's called this. They call it a services page, so you can put whatever you need. But okay. yeah, it's technically a business page on LinkedIn that is separate from your profile. Okay, yeah, I definitely have one of those. I just was tripping, like, wait, is this something <laughs> new? Because right. you know, everybody's enhancing their offerings, and you just never know because it's changing so often. So, thank you for that. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to give a few minutes so we can kind of network and see what each other does. So I'm going to turn it over to um, Trish so she can tell us what she does. And then Trish, you can turn it over to someone else. But I think this is just a great opportunity for us to know who's on the line and how we can possibly uh, utilize each other's services. So Trish, do you want to tell us who you are and what you do? Thank you. Hi, I'm Trish Foss. I'm a massage therapist and a um, Ayurvedic practitioner and I have uh, my own practice so just my own simple little small practice it's <clears throat> it's it's just a it's just a small simple practice and I've kind of kept it that way to keep it simple I was expanding and offering classes and you know um, 
we're working with other people and other educators um, to educate on health and wellness. Um, and now my business is, um, the, the, the building's been sold and I'm getting opportunities and I'm, and I'm kind of wanting to um, retire from massaging mm -hmm. and go into management or spa management or open a business where I rent rooms to other massage therapists or other yeah, acupuncturists, healers, and things like that. Okay. Um, yeah. And, and I just was offered a job at a spa, managing a spa. And then there's, but there's I'm a little bit more medical technical than fluffy spa stuff. Um, so I'm looking at partnering with this functional medicine doctor, which it would be nice and it's local, but we have to figure out how the business would be structured. Okay. It's kind of complicated, I think, but, um, we're, I'm working it out. All but, right. um, yeah, but I spend well, a lot of time, you know, go ahead. I took my calendar offline during COVID because I only wanted to schedule who I wanted to work with. And now I put it back on, on my online scheduling, which is acuity. Um, I find it a little bit, I don't know, I have to get used to working with it again. It's been a couple of years. Um, but yeah, that, that would smooth out a lot of things for me and, and just keeping track of expenses. I'm pretty lazy about it. I mean, I'm not lazy about, I'm just lazy about the monthly keeping it together. <laughs> I have to do it all at the end of the year, like sort out all my receipts and you know, kind of, um, um, but just look at all my bank statements and make sure everything's cohesive. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Uh, who would you like to hear from next? Oh, um, I, you know, I, in this view, I can't tell who's people, who people's names are. That's true. I only can see the names of people who aren't like, okay, Bridget. <laughs> okay. So um, let's go. I don't know. Let's go with Joe Miller. He's right there. What does Joe Miller do? Well, thank you for that. I, my point of entry for my business for most people is through my podcast podcast called pronetworkingleague.com. I'm a networking professional teaching people who represent companies or represent their own business how to harness the solutions that are typically found within their professional network. That's pretty much me <laughs> professionally. Thank you. Who would you like to hear from next? Let's call on Loretta. <laughs> Thank you. So I graduated with a degree in sustainability and environmental policy during COVID. And I got out of school and couldn't get any type of government jobs to work my way up. And so I found grant writing. And I am also a certified life coach and business coach. But I found that grant writing is a more needed niche. And so I just started, I've been about a year in as a freelancer, just opened up my own business about three months ago. And I'm trying to find ways to automate my systems so that when I get new clients, like Jennifer says that they can go to that link and schedule their appointments. And I already know what they're needing for that first appointment. Mm -hmm. And I am just a month in my role at the DR Foundation as the environmental director. So we are gearing up for social media campaigns so that we can help save Sudan from starvation based on what's happening in Ukraine right now and the grain stores. Thank you for that, Loretta. Can you, who would you like to hear from next? Um, let's go ahead and hear from Margie. I love hearing what everybody does. It's always so very interesting here. Um, so my name is Margie Benching and I am the founder and CEO of a senior living marketplace. So if you are looking for a senior community, we tour and vet all of them and you're looking for any type of resource to help support your family member or loved one, you can go to Golden Sherpa goldentrippa.com and um, I'm I'm uh, was that we're just that that was what that was it that's what I do <laughs> so um my, I'm busy I do everything <laughs> I have a um, development team mm -hmm. I am uh, I do the marketing I am an entrepreneur that's where I spend my day I, I spend time in networking so sometimes my day is a long day um, I'm really always looking for ways to work smarter yet I do know for myself personally, I need to step away in order to be creative. I just, it's just, I don't, I can't do it. 
Um, I can't sit for four hours and be as effective as if I take a break. And so I am, uh, I know that. And as an entrepreneur, when I was, when I first started, I wasn't taking breaks and I don't think that helped me. So anyway, to be smarter and Calendly, I started using it and I didn't like it, but I think I'm going to go back because you know, I don't, I don't have time that what you just described, Margie, when are you available? I don't even know. I look at my calendar in the morning and I look at what I have my meetings the night before, and I have to even see who's the names on there. So um, I think I will be instating that and um, that's what I'll be doing. <laughs> Thanks. And I tell you, Margie, it definitely um, syncs with all of the different platforms now. I know, I know it's been enhanced. So Yeah. Um, who would you like to hear from, Margie? You're muted. Joanna Russell? Jonna. Jonna. Jonna Russell. Good job. Remembering my name. <laughs> I'll never like, forget it. <laughs> it's like yours, right? Yes. So, I do need help. I need really help. I need someone that can come on and help me do some filtering put a scarf around my neck and just help me look a little younger. There we go. <laughs> I'm sorry. <He's> silly. <laughs> Here I work with, you know, Jenny Finesse and everybody looks great. Anyway, uh, I'm not sure what the question is, honestly. I took- He's telling us who you are. are. Okay. We're just networking. I'm John Russell. I am the uh, CPA, the accountant that is open to anything that people will keep their books. You do not want to wait till the end of the year and have a box of receipts. We don't do that anymore. There's no need for it. Even if you have receipts, you can have them filed electronically. You don't have to have them in a box. The box days are over. <laughs> so all these things are very good tools that I would work on. I mean, it's an important part of your business. And if you do not feel like you are qualified to do it, you should find some help. Mm -hmm. because it's really the difference it'll be like well I don't think I made any money well I think I lost like you know ten thousand dollars last year I'm like okay well prove it to me mm -hmm. prove it to me like you will the IRS you know mm -hmm. and no I don't want a box of receipts anymore I won't do it because we have learned as we've grown and matured it's not worth our time so this is a okay. great, everything is great. You, everybody's on the right track. This is an awesome series. And I'm good. I'm so glad to see everybody. You too. Thank so, you, Jana. Thank you. Who would you like to hear from next? Uh, how about, have we heard from, I don't know, Carmen already? No, <laughs> no you haven't. <laughs> okay. Carmen, are you there? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> I'm here. Can you see me? Yes, we can yes. see you. Okay. Thank you. Well, the challenging for me is that I just um, been working for the last three years and in a corporation in Nigeria. Oh. And uh, the uh, my situation it has been is the controlling and I think it's the, the way we dif think differently in here in the US than they think in Nigeria mm. uh, with the people that I have working in there. I have a very reliable people, but uh, every time I bring a question, like we're talking accounting, I, I believe that really accounting is the basic of any business. So you really have to keep on top of everything that you use, every little cent that you spend. And I'm an old, I'm 73 years old. And so I'm still, even though I use the computer and everything, to me, paperwork is very more factual than the, com the computer thing. Because I can go and see and rapidly check everything that is on, on the paper. And, Otherwise, with a computer, you have to go and sit in there. And I don't have, because I have more than one business. So uh, for me, the time sitting in the computer is kind of a very difficult. And what I'm finding out over there is that conveying that this is a very critical 
part of any business uh, because then you don't know, never know where you are. So at all the times and everyday basis, you wanna know where you stand and the, the, uh, the, the place and they're very lax because their, their solution is, this is the way that we in Nigeria do things. Mm. And right now I'm in the process of trying to get my manager there, which is also my partner. We form an LLC corporation. And so uh, what I'm trying to, I've been uh, trying to achieve is to bring him over here so that he has the chance to see the difference between running the business so that he can enhance what he already has. He's a very hard worker, but he lacks the fact that he doesn't think that some of the stuff, they're very critical. Uh, the business that we have there, uh, it is um, a farm. It's a, we have um, poultry, we have pigs, we have fish. So it's a variety of things that we have. And so I want him to be able to see also because the technology in here for keeping the birds and keeping the fish working and everything totally differs from what they think that is acceptable over there, okay? And Maybe, um, um, Carmen, I don't wanna cut you off, but we do have a, a just uh we're at time yeah, but right. maybe you and jana need to get together because jana is skilled with that with with this the accounting and maybe she can help you to kind of work through some of those nuances with having the international clients because that is that's a whole nother ball game and um and getting that support and maybe someone who's experienced but also um, someone that you can bounce ideas off of. And that's another reason why these masterminds are so important because you mm -hmm. can connect and not be so lonely or feel like you're going at it by yourself or alone or and have someone that might be experienced to give you some support in that way. And All that right. makes sense. Yes. So definitely, mm -hmm. um, if you can put your um, information in the chat and follow up with one another, that'd be great. Um, I think we have not heard from Bridget or Lancer and I think uh, Kirsten. So who goes first? Should I go? Go right ahead. Okay. So my name is Bridget O. Michaels. I'm in Puyallup area. So what do I do? I am I'm a business coach for entrepreneurs, coaches, consultants, and other business owners. What do I do? I help you avoid marketing mistakes so that you can you know, work less and show up more in your business. And then I'm from Nigeria. <laughs> nice Thank to meet you. you. <laughs> Thank you. And maybe Brigitte would might be a great uh, person for you to connect with to do, too. So that make sure is you put correct. your email addresses in the chat. Go ahead, Lancer. I know we're over time, so I thank you all for giving us a couple more minutes. Yeah, I want to make this quick. Um, I kind of said already what I do. Um, I do hair, and I'm learning how to be a fractional CFO. I'm a former salon co-owner. Uh, I discovered that I like the financial ends of business better than the rest. I just like marketing. So anyway, I'm trying to grow into more of a uh, CFO role, uh, but I need some training. And right now, I'm um, as the hairdresser, my focus is on trans and non-binary clients because I'm also transgendered and um so that's my, my focus for my hair business. But I'm also preparing for preparing for a major move to Ireland with my husband and our cat in September. So um, that's where I'm at with that. And uh, well, thank you so much, Lancer. How yep. about you, Kirsten? Hi, everybody. Thanks for taking time after after the time. So I actually own a clothing consignment store for men and women, and it was located on Sixth Avenue during COVID. We did have to shut it down, did have to sunset the business a bit. Um, it's a little bit more in a transition than a sunset. So I'm learning about what that is looking like in transition mode. Um, in the meantime, while I'm uh, working on that new business plan and that new recreation of that. Uh, I actually am working for PLU, 
in Pierce County as a business outreach director. So out here networking, um, you know, just started about a week ago. So I'm just learning all of the things. Reporting in progress. And uh, looking forward to serving Pierce County. Recording stopped. Well, welcome and thank you so much. Listen, this has been awesome. I'm gonna turn it back over to James and um, we will go from there. Thank you all for your time and your energy in this session and look forward to the next one. Thank you, Jennifer Ness. Yes, I thank you guys all for showing up today um, and giving your great feedback and your personal stories. Uh, that is a large part of why we host these masterminds because truly what we want is we wanna give you the information that you can use and then hear about how others have used it, right? Where, where are we at? So we can, we can take some of that back to our own businesses. So, uh, you know, with that, with that being said, thank you so much, Jenna Finesse for, for coming in. Um, thank you guys all for, for coming on and uh, we will see you at the next Scale Up Mastermind. Thank you. Have a great, great one. All righty. Thank you for having you as a speaker. Oh, thank